All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our second of three advising info series sessions. Um, last week, we talked about um, the portal. We went through a portal tour with Melody and um, viewed the institution profile. We talked about the passport, the UCGS, common curricula. Um, and so today we have another great topic for you. But before we get started with that, I just want to reintroduce myself. My name is Emily Nunez. I'm the Associate for Transfer and Talent Pathways at CHEV. Um, I've been here for almost two years. Um, prior to that, I was the transfer counselor at Central Virginia Community College for many years. Um, and so I feel like even though I'm in this role now, you know, advising is where my heart is. And so I'm really grateful to um, meet with you all today. And I'm Melody Crenshaw. I am the Transfer Virginia Portal Coordinator. Um, so managing all of the data that comes in on the to, to make the content for the portal, um, working with all of you advisors, doing training with the portal. Uh, my background is uh, immediately was a uh, counselor at Germana Community College, working with all sorts of students, but transfer students were certainly a number of them. Um, I am a transfer student myself and am painfully aware of how things may or may not transfer. That was years ago, uh, but uh, certainly want to make transfer as easy as possible um, and consistent across all colleges where that can happen. So thank you for joining us today. All right, so let me share my screen here. Okay, so today we're talking about the different agreement types, um, admission, whether that's through guaranteed admission or competitive admission, and just requirements um, for admission in general. And so I'm going to show you all how to get to these documents um, after the PowerPoint presentation, but we just want to you know, bring your attention to the fact that there are definitions for different transfer topics. Um, so there's several CHEV policy documents that I want to um, show you all that I've, I've quoted and, and included throughout the presentation. One is the development of transfer agreements, and the other one is the state policy on college transfer. Both of those have transfer definitions included in them. And then, of course, there is a glossary within Transfer Virginia that we'll show you that also has transfer definitions. Um, sometimes, you know, we talk about these things all the time and don't realize that, you know, other advisors or maybe students don't know exactly what we're referring to. So it can be helpful to direct um, you and them to these resources. So we're gonna to start today by talking about guaranteed admission agreements. I'm sure many of you, most of you, maybe all of you are aware of what those are. They have been around for a while, um, but we have recently in the past few years um, been re-signing those because there were many that you know were 10 plus years old. Um, and a template has been created. So now when you look at these new guaranteed admission agreements, they're all going to look the same. So if you're wondering about a specific requirement at a couple of institutions, you'll know exactly where to go to find that information. Um, but the guaranteed admission agreement is an agreement between the two and four year institution according to which a student is guaranteed admission to the four-year institution by earning their transferable associate degree and then meeting certain academic benchmarks. Um, this may guarantee general admission to the institution or in some cases to a specific program of study at the institution, um, but it doesn't necessarily entitle the student to be admitted to a specific program otherwise. Um, these are between the Virginia Community College system and the four-year institution, both public and private. Um, again, the new agreements follow this template, so it includes definitions, requirements for admission, and then how does general education, students earning degree concurrent with high school and credit for prior learning, how does that all apply? Um, what is required uh, to complete um, the criteria for the GAA? Catalog determination. So is the student um, under the catalog for their first semester uh, after high school at the community college? So if they graduated high school in 2024, are they in the fall 2025 catalog? for that four-year institution, or is it when they get to the four-year institution? So let's say they transfer fall of 2026. Is that when their catalog year starts? That information is important to know. Um, so they include that on there. And then any reference to transfer guides is included on that. 
These can be found, VCCS, um, the VCCS page has a transfer programs page where you can find all of these agreements um, or on the Transfer Virginia portal. So again, if you're working with students, you know, we encourage you to use the portal and you can find all of this in there to direct them to as well. So that when they're, you know, reading through these on their own, they know where to find that information as well. Okay. So the next thing, these are kind of the new kids on the block, the guaranteed program admission agreements, or at least being called that now, and we'll explain what that means um, in a little bit. Um, but these are agreements also between the Virginia Community College System and the four-year institution, but it's to a specific program. So not necessarily to the university at large, or you know, let's say, for example, Virginia Tech College, College of Engineering has a guaranteed admission agreement. Um, these are for specific programs. So let's say Virginia Tech's uh, mechanical engineering had different admission requirements than some of their other disciplines. They could enter into a guaranteed program admission agreement for that specific program. As I mentioned, these are fairly new, so we only have a handful of them right now. We may see more in the future. Um, we may not. It just kind of depends on what the appetite is um, for signing into these with the four-year institutions. These also have a template. So again, you'll be able to find all the same information on all of them. Same information that we saw with the guaranteed admission agreement. Um, however, these also include information about passport and UCGS course waivers, program course roster. So if there's specific courses, those would be included. And then of course, a, a transfer guide is required to be submitted along with these so that they can be used um, together. As of right now, I believe these are mostly only on the portal. Um, again, we'll talk about the differences between that um, when we get to the portal later. Um, but again, that's where you'll be able to find most of the information um, regarding gu guaranteed program admission agreements. Okay. So articulation agreements, same idea, you know, it's it's an agreement that is telling the student what they need to take to be admitted, um, you know, the transfer associate degree, what is the GPA, but this is between a specific community college and the four-year institution. These are generally regional or local agreements. Um, and so, you know, these are not with the VCCS at large. Um, and they may be program specific. I think generally they are, but they certainly don't have to be. Um, there's no template because these are not mandated or required by the state. These are again, local agreements signed between the community college and the local four-year institution. So these would be housed and maintained um, by the participating two and four-year institutions likely on their homepages. These can also be found in the portal if they are submitted um, for posting. Okay, so um, with all of these agreement types, again, the, the purpose is the same. We want to communicate to students, you know, what do they need to be admitted um, and guaranteed admission. And a lot of students love hearing that, as we all know. So um, students can really, you know, um, you know, work very hard to meet those criteria. So if, if there is a guaranteed admission agreement and there is also a transfer guide, then that student you know, has access to just really all of the information they need, not only to be admitted, but to follow a two plus two pathway. Um, so the GAA informs the student what is needed to be admitted. So again, minimum GPA plus the transfer associate degree. And then with more competitive programs, there may be additional requirements like certain grades and certain courses. The transfer guide is a statewide template that serves as the student facing document, which includes the pragmatic pathway map on the first part or the curricular information, and then the pertinent transfer related information that's included in the transfer guidance section of the transfer guide. And we'll be talking um, at length about transfer guides at our next session uh, next week. So please um, join us then. Um, the transfer guide informs the students, again, what coursework they need to take to complete that two plus two bachelor's degree. And then if both are available, they can be used in tandem and the student again is in really great shape for admission and completing that bachelor's degree. So competitive admission. So I mentioned a lot of our students really want that guarantee. And in some cases, they're just not eligible for whatever reason, you know, they might be missing one minor thing, but it may make them ineligible for the guaranteed admission agreement. And they can get really upset about that, as we know. And, and you know, we can sympathize with that, but 
we can still encourage them that they can apply for competitive admission. So if they don't qualify, and, and most students, I will say, whether they qualify or not, they, they are able to transfer without that guarantee because our students are doing well. Um, you know, if you ask a four-year institution, a lot of times they don't even really, um, uh, I don't want to say document, but track that guaranteed admission versus competitive admission. It's, did the student get in or not? You know, that's kind of how they look at it. Um, or were they eligible to be admitted or not? But to be competitive, students should still, even if they don't meet the guaranteed admission criteria, they should still follow the requirements within that because then they're going to be in really good shape otherwise. Um, they should strive to have a good GPA, obviously, earn at least a C or better in each course. Um, the more competitive the institution or the major that they're going into at that institution, the higher their grades should be. Um, so they should be getting A's and B's in, in many cases. Um, if a transfer guide is available, obviously have them follow those um, requirements and all of the information that is included on that, you know, not just the courses, but many times on the transfer guide, the four-year institution includes notes that the student, you know, um, needs to know to be prepared. And then if a transfer guide isn't available, and again, we'll talk about this in much more detail next week, but, you know, they would need to do some research, you know, what are the major requirements and what do I need to be admitted into that major and that um, college or university? So using the Transfer Virginia portal resources that are available, um, because this information is supplied by the four years. So pretty much everything that you would need to know or the student would need to know to be competitively admitted should be found in there. Another one that I am sure a lot of you face this question a lot is, you know, how about our students who are earning their associate degree concurrently with high school? So a lot of times these are called early college programs. What does all of this mean for them? So many of our four-year partners um, do not guarantee admission for these students, but not all. Some of our four-year partners do guarantee admission for these students. So, you know, you'll have to, and the student will have to, you know, look at each individual agreement to see, you know, how they qualify. Um, in some cases, whether they offer guaranteed admission or not to these students, they may offer a general education waiver to those students. So they'll have their associate degree. They consider the general education requirement satisfied because of that. Some cases they don't. Um, so again, it's just, you know, we, we can't um, require that of the four years for this dual enrollment coursework, but we do require that they are transparent about how they treat that. In many cases, the students will apply as freshmen, um, but then they've got, you know, 60 credits of transferable coursework that comes with them. There are some institutions that the student applies as a transfer student. You know, it really is just going to depend. I remember when I started in my previous job, this was a hard conversation to have with parents sometimes. But when you tell them, you know, your student is 18 years old, they're applying as freshmen. So they get those benefits that freshmen would get. Freshman housing, freshman scholarships, freshman orientation, things like that but they also have 60 credits, a lot of times the parents are happy to hear that and the students are happy to hear that. Um, the information about how this applies at each institution is going to be found on the guaranteed admission agreement on the new ones. Um, that is part of the template. If it's an old guaranteed admission agreement, so signed before 2021, um, that information may or may not be on there, but it should be found in the portal. And again, we'll show you where you can find that um, at the end of this presentation. It can also be found on the transfer guide um, if one is available. So that is built into the template as well so that students can see right on the transfer guide, you know, if they are earning their associate degree concurrently with high school, how that applies when they transfer to that institution. I do wanna point out there is a, another chef policy here for dual enrollment transferability. So for purposes of transfer, dual enrollment courses shall be treated in parallel with the same course taken when taken on campus. So. Whether the student took a dual enrollment course at the high school, through early college, at the community college, or they took it, you know, after they completed high school as a, you know, traditional um, transfer student, those transfer courses should be treated the same at our public institutions. So we get feedback sometimes that maybe that's not happening. And absolutely, if you hear that, especially with a public institution, please let me know. Um, but many times there's other factors that we have to investigate first to see, you know, is this actually true? Um, our private partners, if they are participating in Transfer Virginia, we 
Ideally, they are honoring this as well, but they are not mandated like the public institutions are. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna talk about before we show you all these resources are letters of intent. Um, some of you may or may not be aware of these, but basically they are referenced in some of our guaranteed admission agreements. They are now required to be mentioned in the new guaranteed admission agreements um, through that template. Um, but for your school, some of them require these, basically letting them know that a student intends to transfer, in some cases under the guaranteed admission agreement, in some cases just their intent to transfer to that institution in general. Um, what we are trying to work with for your uh, colleges on now is the language around that. Uh, many of our templates had pointed students to the portal, and that works or informally rather. Um, basically, they go to the resource center, that is an option. If they fill that out, it will notify that for your institution that the student is interested in. No, Melody's telling me no. Yeah, let's let's skip over the conversation about the portal until I get in here. Okay. At the so end. we'll come back to that. It doesn't we'll formally, come back to that. it does not formally register their intent is the point. So there's a way around it through there, but what we are trying to do is to have for your institutions include any specific links or forms both on the guaranteed admission agreement, on the transfer guide, and then also in another uh, space in the portal that we'll show you. So students know, A, is it required? And B, how to get to it directly. Um, some institutions require it to be su submitted as, at a specific point. So, you know, upon completion of 15 credits, but before they complete 45 credits. I've seen that for some of our more competitive institutions. They want it within that window. Um, but many institutions do not require one. And so that, again, is why we're trying to work with them on that language, because if they don't require it, that's all the student needs to know. We don't need them to do anything else. Um, so how do you find out if a, if a school requires the letter of intent? Well, again, on that new GAA template, it's section 2J. There is a section registration of intent to use the agreement, and they would speak to it there. Um, it's also on the transfer guide if one is available. Um, so we have that built in. When I work with four years on their transfer guides, if they don't require a letter of intent, I encourage them to indicate that just so the student knows, you know, there's no guesswork there. They know they don't have to submit one. And then Melody's going to show us in the portal under, um, there's a GAA information section, key additional requirements where they can speak to that. We are, again, working with the schools to include that information. So again, there may be language out there directing students to the portal. We're trying to steer them more directly to the four-year institution. So if you're not finding any information there, it's because we're in the midst of this this language revision, so you can just uh, direct students to the four-year institution directly. Okay, so I'm going to pause there and let me stop sharing for just a moment and open up the SHEV website. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is just SHEV.edu. If you go under four institutions and then under policies and guidelines, academic affairs policy right here. And then we are going to go to transfer related. And so there's a lot of information in here about the passport and UCGS. Again, we talked about that last week, but if you want to dig a little bit deeper about the policy around these programs, you can find that here. Um, for today's purposes though, we're going to show you the um, development of transfer agreements. That was the first link on the first slide, tells you about the policy. It stems from code. So this is again required. The definition, so everything that I went through and more is included here. There are guidelines for transfer agreements, um, articulation agreements. So I will say, you know, when I was a transfer counselor, I was approached by four year institutions often wanting to sign into an articulation agreement with my institution. So if, if you all are working with a four-year and they're interested in doing that, please you know, refer them and yourselves to this um, policy document. But I would say also think about would this agreement benefit students across the VCCS, maybe not just your institution. If that's the case, then it maybe should be a um, guaranteed admission agreement for all VCCS students, not necessarily just your community college. Can I tack on to that, Emily? Mm-hmm. The part of the Transfer Virginia project, if you will, the initiative is to 
I don't want to say take away those articulation agreements, but open up the Commonwealth to all community college students to transfer to a particular university. And the first step of that was updating the individual courses that are listed in the master course catalog for VCCS so that now on so many courses, the learning outcomes are the same no matter where the course is taken across the Commonwealth. So whether it's Danville or Tidewater or Laurel Ridge, the same learning outcomes are expected in a particular course. That makes that course transferable across Virginia. So yeah, really important if, if there's an articulation agreement to be signed, my thinking is it is more likely to be in the applied associate degree realm rather than the transfer associate degree realm because those transfer associate degrees now should be fairly standard across the state. So my two cents. Thank you. Um, we also have uh, dual admission agreements. That is a big focus with the state right now. Uh, many of you already have these agreements with local institutions, but we are trying to uh, create more opportunity for uh, VCCS transfer students. Guaranteed admission agreements again. And then reverse transfer. I'll just talk about that really quickly. Um, you know, if a student transfers prior to completing their associate degree, it is possible they will have taken, you know, whatever remaining coursework they needed at the four year to complete their associate degree. So they can transfer those credits back and then you know, get their associate degree um, after the fact. So um, that's another opportunity that um, definitely uh, should take advantage of. And then the other policy was the transfer policy here. So state policy on college transfer, that was the second link on that first slide. Um, again, it includes the definitions, um, Admission, so a lot of good information here. I just wanted to point you all to that so that you can um, you know, read uh, more in depth if you are interested in doing so. And I'm going to stop sharing and then kick it over to Melody to show us some of this information in the portal. Fantastic. All right, let me bring up, share my slides here. All right. I want to show you a couple of places where you can find um, guaranteed admission agreement information, um, show you where we're adding in the letter of intent and what does that uh, dual enrolled student uh, need to do, need to know to apply. So first and foremost, um, the Resource Center. So let me actually go back here www.transfervirginia.org. Okay, why my computer's being very slow here. It's thinking about it. Sure, I'm gonna to go to the home page and then it's gonna take me just as long to get right back to this page, which is the resource center. Um, there we go. All right, so from the home page, I, I would go to the resource center and here, Guaranteed admission agreements are found under filter by topic alphabetically. So show more, and there's the guaranteed admission agreements or the guaranteed program admission agreements. And I will say for the guaranteed program admission, several of these that are listed are quite old, 2011, 2012, 2018, before the new template was created. Um, and so they are more of the spirit of the GPAA, meaning program specific, but labeled as guaranteed admission because they haven't gone through that GPAA template, the new one. But if you click on guaranteed admission, there are 30 things here. Um, and you can even filter by applicable school. Um, yeah, to, to figure out, oh, there's a, you know, George Mason University has one, happens to be showing here between the uh, university and the Virginia Community College system. This is, I believe, a newly signed document. So there's a lot of information in here about what courses students should be taking, um, exclusions to the agreement. And I wanna get down here to the end. Terms of agreement. 
And then you can see, oh, sorry, this is an old one. I thought this was a new one. They have, I believe they have a new one underway. It hasn't come here yet. Um, let me find, oh, help me out, Emily. Who's got a new one? William and Mary. Thank you. Just, just signed this year. Uh, I want to show the, the, yeah, 2023. Perfect. Um, and let's see. There, that's what I wanted to show. The uh, item J, 2J, registration of intent to use the, agree the agreement. So sadly, the Portal coordinator was not consulted on the wording in the GAA template um, because I would have changed the wording. Um, yeah, it's there is no registering the letter of intent through the Transfer Virginia portal. We don't do anything official through the portal. I would hate to have someone come here and think, oh, well, I submitted something but maybe it didn't make the deadline. The portal is not gonna get in the middle of, of meeting deadlines. Um, but I did wanna point this out that this is a place to learn whether a letter of intent is required or not. So that's one thing. Um, let me then jump to a different screen that does show a little bit more and where we're going. Um, this is not live. This is our staging site, which is our test site. We are in the midst of the fall refresh, which means before Thanksgiving, we're going to have some new content in the portal. And this is something that I'm asking the four-year universities to update this fall. So in reaction to that, holy cow, there's nothing on the portal that actually could be submitted. For example, um, and I'm going to use the University of Lynchburg because they've already updated their GAA file showing the new information. So if you go to search for a program, you can pull up the program details page. And I'm choosing the BA in accounting. Here's the description of the program. Um, there is lots of information you are probably already aware of under the programs. But here is the applicable admissions agreements dropdown. And what this is showing, um, and there are 23 entries that tells me that the only thing that uh, Lynch University of Lynchburg has loaded is the guaranteed admissions agreement between the VCCS and the University of Lynchburg. Okay, well, I'm a student at Bright Point. I want to see what that looks like. And this is where I would actually recommend you come first because it's a snapshot of the larger GAA. If you needed to get into the nitty detail, nitty gritty details of you know, what courses the student has to have to qualify, yeah, you might go to the resource center. But here you will know all of the programs covered by this agreement. It's all programs unless noted below under programs not covered. Okay, programs not covered is blank. That means at the University of Lynchburg, all programs are participating in the GAA. Some universities, um, you might look at VCU, they have a long list that aren't covered, and then they have some program specifics that pick out a couple of those, like nursing, for example. So for University of Lynchburg, um, the student needs to have a 2.0 GPA before submitting, submitting the letter of intent. 12 credit minimum before submitting that. Um, and actually, now that I'm seeing this, I'm going to show you something. Maybe this isn't the best wording, but I'm going to show you why. Um, so there's some other transfer related information here. Then how are dual enrollment credits treated? They don't make a distinction between dual enrollment and courses taken at the uh, college. But here is an important one that you advisors have asked for. The early college student or those students who are completing the uh, college degree concurrent with high school graduation. And so this tells you specifically that those students who have completed a transfer-oriented associate degree will be awarded appropriate class standing at the University of Lynchburg based on the number of credits transferred. 
So if the student has 60 credits, they are going to go in with junior status. However, read this carefully. Students under this standing will still apply as a first year student to the institution. Like Emily said, we wanna make sure that they get the, the uh, first, year, uh, orient, first year student orientation any first year scholarships that may be available or anything else that applies to the first year student except the number of credits being transferred in. Um, under the key additional requirements, again, we are listening to your feedback and I have asked universities to state if a letter of intent to transfer is required, yes or no, in this case, a letter of intent to transfer is not required. I would show you another example of a college, of a university who has put in that yes, a letter of intent is required. And my ask of them is to include the URL so that a student or you advisor can click on that. It takes you directly to the university's form to be completed you're actually on their website. It opens a new browser tab. You're on their website. The student can complete that form and submit it following the university's policy. And so everything about that letter of intent to transfer is on that web page. The URL still isn't working, but it's going to work before we go live in the middle of November. So while today on our live transfervirginia.org site, that link won't be there, and maybe the information about the letter of intent being required, yes or no, isn't there. It will be when we do the content refresh this fall because of feedback from advisors like you. So we are being, uh, we're receptive to those ideas. Um, keep them coming. I am gonna bounce over- Melody, to power yes. real quick, can you show them how to get to that page one more time? Absolutely. That you were just on? Yep. Um, I will do it from the live site. It's the same path. Um, this is from a, uh, if you go to programs and courses, because you're searching for a program with a student, you will, I don't know, choose Bridgewater College, and you are interested in the business administration major. So you're going to look at that page. You may look at all sorts of information here. I will take this second to point out a transfer guide is available in the Resource Center for this program. That link will take you to the Resource Center to filter by Bridgewater's transfer guides, and you can look for the business administration major. That's just a little perk there. But for today's presentation, I want to show you the applicable admissions agreements drop down. And if you click on that, I'm showing you Bridgewater in the live site. The other one, it's the same thing if you're on the University of Lynchburg. Um, but what I will point out, yeah, okay, Bridgewater is ahead of the game. This is the live site and they already have some information. They do say students must submit a letter of intent to transfer and it gives you those details. What will be updated for the fall refresh is an actual link to take you to Bridgewater's page where you can complete the letter of intent to transfer. So you really wanna to go to the program page and then to the applicable agreement drop down. Applicable admissions agreements. Okay, um, I am including this. Uh, I just wanna point out, um, this is part of the PowerPoint that I guess it's going to show on the recording. We don't. I don't think we need to send that out. Um, again, University of Lynchburg, their Bachelor of Science in Equestrian Sport Management. I've highlighted the applicable admissions agreement. And then when you open that and choose the guaranteed admissions agreement between VCCS and University of Lynchburg, these are kinds of the kind of the things that you want to um, pay attention to. How does that early college student apply? in this case as a first year student, and under key additional requirements, is a letter of intent to transfer required or not required? If it is required, there should be a URL for your student to click. All right. And I'm gonna put it there um, and thank you for attending.
I do want to take this time now to um, open it up to questions. Do we want to stop the recording, Emily? Sure. Yeah. Okay. 